Uh, we started this process because I'm 25, Lucy's 24, and we thought it was going to take a couple of years, and I didn't want to have, like, I didn't want to, like, get to 27 and then us both panic and be like, oh, we've, we've got to start our whole fertility journey now. Um, and obviously I know it can take a long time and you've got to be conscious of, like, it can be quite... Can be quite an expensive process um so yeah we've started it now i have had like a scan done to see what my um ovaries are like in terms of polycystic why are you looking at me like that huh in terms of um how polycystic they are basically and my ovaries are quite polycystic like very polycystic in fact um so like i had a scan inside um this process we started like november time we called up yeah we went there we made an appointment we we both had to have like a full mot kind of thing check for like any infections anything like that obviously they did an internal scan on me and then did a blood test lewis had to have a sperm check so lewis came back perfect strong, strong um i came back i already was aware that i'd obviously got polycystic ovaries but um it came back that my um cyst count i feel like i'm talking about it really calmly like normally i start crying but i feel like i'm doing quite well they basically have advised me what to do moving forward so then i had to go back and have like check for hepatitis check for hiv and so i had to have a blood test to check that um, that's all coming back clear so the fact that all that's coming back clear now and the doctors and everything are aware of what's going on they can then kind of give me what they think will be the best plan for me basically i've got like a patient portal um on the care um like website so that i can go on there and like check and ask questions and all the information everything's on there so they've sent me through my prescription of like what i've got to do they've prescribed me with the letrozole what's this one i don't know what this is so i'm gonna have a look through yeah i don't really know where to start with this video to be honest because i said that i was going to document my journey from the beginning with the whole fertility thing and that kind of failed um yeah it didn't really go as planned i wanted to document it all just because I, I wanted to <laughs> hello my angel boy hello i love you with my whole heart um just because i wanted to have it there for me to look back at um and yeah it kind of just didn't really go as planned with everything yeah, but can mummy talk now? Oh, you're not getting attention, so you're getting aggravated. Okay. okay. I'm sorry. Right, let mummy just do this. This part of my journey, I know that I definitely want to film and remember because we're moving into the next stages now. So, for those of you who don't know, me and Lewis have been trying to conceive for a long time. We've been together for three and a half years. Um, we kind of, after a year, um, were never really cared for in terms of like what we were doing. Um, obviously I never fell pregnant. I did know that I'd got polycystic ovaries, so I knew that that was always gonna be something that would like affect my fertility and like cause me issues in the future. Um, I did have ovarian drilling and a laparoscopy back when I was 21. Um, I'm now 26 so yeah that was a long time ago um and just had my fallopian, fallopian tubes checked and stuff just because i was worried obviously when it came to fertility and things like that that it was going to affect them it was around about after my birthday um august 2021 we decided like we kind of had the conversation we started at a fertility clinic we did that first round and i fell pregnant today <clears throat> it's the 11th of march i'm gonna get emotional just talking about it i haven't like actually said it out loud yet like um i did my pregnancy test this morning at eight o'clock um me and lewis went and got them last night so i was like panicking so i was like i don't have any pregnancy tests we went and got them and then i've done it this morning when lewis has gone to work it's came back
so that was like incredible um we were like over the moon um i just obviously after that thought that it was just that my body needed help to like um create the eggs um unfortunately that pregnancy ended with a missed miscarriage um which like i can speak about it now but at the time and like up until probably now i've really really struggled to talk about it um so since then we've been trying with like the ovarian um induction and the lh trigger shot um unfortunately we haven't had any luck and just my emotions were just so high like every single month every single cycle like getting that negative pregnancy test and then coming on my period it generally is like soul destroying and probably one of the most difficult emotions that i can ever try and explain like i just don't feel like you can explain it to somebody unless they've actually been through it um honestly the toll that this has taken on me i generally can't even I generally, um, like, I can't even explain what it's been like. Like, I'm just all over the place. I don't really know where to put myself. And then the last week of the month when I'm constantly having negative pregnancy tests, and I, I generally just don't feel like it was any good for my mental health, if I'm being honest, in terms of the mental space that I was in, that I have been in. Um, I just really feel like it's just made me not me anymore and like that makes me feel really sad to say like I just feel like I completely lost myself like completely lost my personality like completely lost who I am um my life has just became so much revolving around like me trying to become pregnant and me like constantly beating myself up because there's something wrong with me that like it just became a constant battle in my head that I just haven't been able to get out of. In the new year, um, I've kind of just said that we're going to start our IVF journey, um, which is something that I've only just been able to get my head around. In my mind, I've always been like, I want to conceive my baby naturally, which unfortunately, it's just not the case for all of us. Um, it's not going to be the case for me right now, um, whether it is in the future or not, I'm not sure. But yeah, obviously that's not, a decision for me to make and I kind of felt like bitter at the fact that I had that choice and I've had that choice taken away from me. I have a call with um, the fertility clinic tomorrow which is going to be my first call about IVF. I have been sent over my prescription invoice of all the prescriptions I've got to have and my protocol for my IVF cycle which I'm planning to do in January um, which I'm super scared, excited, anxious, nervous overwhelmed thrilled you name it about yeah all of those emotions right allergies either of you no not at all no right pre-sedation assessment so can i do that before i carry on yeah yeah okay mm -hmm. yeah you'll come on you'll be okay Look, we're all working with you. We're all looking out for you. You had Helen just come in and say hi. It's stressful. And that's why I say, you know, it's... it's It's a tough journey. It's a tough journey. You're all right as well. I know, I know. It's tough for both of you. And that's why I was saying at the start, you know, particularly with times like Christmas, Time. Yeah. You know, it's about you two for a few weeks and then we can focus on this. You you, you have fun, you know. You're okay? Yeah, and get yourself in the best. It's all real now, isn't it? Yeah, yeah I'm okay. <laughs> I've done so many times. Poke it up. Yeah. Um, I started my injection yesterday. I don't know whether it's that or what else is going on at the minute that's making me feel really sad. But I just feel so sad. I've just felt weird and in like a bit of pain all day. 
as much as we really scared. And like, I'm worried that I'm not do. No, I feel like it doesn't work at all. I always feel like it's my fault. So tomorrow is day eight of a cycle, so we're going for our scan tomorrow. Um, but today, well, oh, say today, it's like one o'clock. This morning was my first day back at work, and I felt really anxious about going in anyway because of it being like a woman's salon and like kids literally being topic of conversation all the time. Um I'm just really struggling with it. I had to go in the back to do my injection and then come back out. And then the whole conversation is just babies and children. And I just called Eden and just said, like, I just don't think I can do it. Like, like I feel like I'm like, I'll be fine, I'll go to work. I think I'll be dead strong. And I just can't. I know in my mind that, like, I'm struggling to regulate my emotions because of the injections. And I keep saying to myself, like, yeah, I'm feeling like this because, like, pregnancy and being a mom and babies and stuff is a trigger for me. But then I'm also feeling like this because I can't regulate how I'm feeling because I'm taking so many hormones right now. So, like, I'm trying to remember that, but it still just doesn't make it seem any easier. And it's hard. <laughs> The ultrasound today, um, my first one, which is my day eight, and it's Friday the 13th, which I'm not the happiest about. I've had a couple of people tell me that it was like quite painful when they're doing the ultrasound because obviously it's like a probe and it's pressing against each of your ovaries and when they're swollen it's not the most comfortable so i've had so many ultrasounds like over the past 15 months um but today it was definitely quite sore and i feel like my tummy has like if you look here looks really swollen um but for me in the morning this is like really bloated so i feel like my ovaries are definitely Feeling attacked right now. Counted all my follicles. Um, she like checked my uterus lining, my endometrium. That was like nice. For my day eight, it was 7.4. Counted all my follicles and I had 62. So she said that that was definitely on the higher side, um, which because of having polycystic ovaries and my AMH level being really high, we were kind of expecting. One second, let me look away. I love a follicle. <laughs> we get so excited. 13. Yep. Perfect.
went for our scan yesterday, which was Monday. I've still got a lot of follicles um, over 60. They're only counting the ones that are over eight millimeters um, as like follicles that will, will basically be used in the egg retrieval. I also went to have bloods taken for my thyroid. Um, so I should be getting like the information back from that tomorrow. I've had the two scans now and when I found that I've had both the ultrasounds um, on the night time, I've had really, really bad pain. So like last night I was in agony with my tummy um, and I feel like it's to do with the fact that obviously with on the ultrasound they're pushing, pushing on my ovaries to see how many eggs there are and like they're moving around them quite a lot to make sure that they've counted all the eggs and make sure that they've seen everything and that everything's fine. Um, but then on the night time I do find that it feels really uncomfortable because they're just kind of aching and just feel a little bit sore. So um, last night they did hurt quite a bit. Um, but tomorrow scan is going to tell me whether I'm going to have the egg retrieval on Friday or whether I'm going to have it on Monday. So I am quite nervous for the morning. Um, I really wanted it to be Friday because I really feel like I'm overdoing the injections now. Um, I woke up yesterday morning before the scan and I kind of lay there and actually deep to the fact that I'm currently going through the IVS pro IVF process and like couldn't believe that this is my life. Not even in like a negative way, just I remember hearing people speak to me about going through IVF or hearing people that had gone through IVF or even going to school with people whose parents had gone through IVF in order to conceive them. And I remember feeling so like, like my heart would drop for people that were having to go through that. Um, and I remember being younger and thinking, oh, I could never imagine having to go through something like that. Like, that must be so hard. Tomorrow is an exciting day. In the morning, we're going at 10. So yeah, we're gonna see where my follicles are at tomorrow. Um, I'm really, really hoping and praying that they're big enough for me to do the egg retrieval on Friday. Oh, it's a slow push. Yeah. Big one, too. Tomorrow we might for our third scan today it's Wednesday um yeah we went for our third scan today I don't even know why I'm crying because it wasn't like a negative thing scan like it wasn't like a it wasn't bad or anything so the scan took quite a while for her to measure majority of them she didn't measure all of them but majority of them um she just wants me to like keep an eye on myself as well in case I have any like shortness of breath or anything like that just because of me suffering from ovarian hyperstimulation because of me having so many eggs. On my first scan um, my oestrogen levels were like 400 then my second scan they were like 4000 and then today she's saying that she's hoping they've like doubled but if they've gone too high, they'd have to cancel my egg retrieval. Um, she thinks my egg retrieval is not going to be this Friday. She thinks it's going to be Monday, which means a couple extra days on the injections. I just feel really... I don't even know. I just feel so overwhelmed at the minute. I don't even know how to explain like how I'm feeling because everything's going like in the right direction. I'm losing track of days. Today is um, Thursday. Um, I went for my third scan yesterday morning. Um, I was under the impression that I'd be having my egg collection on Monday. Um, 
so they did my blood test. I feel like I've already said this, but I did my blood test and everything yesterday. And then I had a phone call at three o'clock yesterday afternoon. And I'm having my collection. They told me I'd had, be having my egg collection Friday, which is tomorrow, because my um, estrogen, like my blood test results came back from my estrogen and it's higher than what they would have wanted. Um, so, yeah. As much as I wanted it to be tomorrow, I think because I'd got it in my head that it was Monday, it's just completely threw me off. But I'm excited that it's tomorrow. I did my last menopause shot last night at 7.30. And then at 10.30, I did my Ganassi shot. So, so today I haven't had to do any injections, which has been lovely. Um, however, my belly is so bloated and sore and I've got like such bad backache like I've had it since yesterday and I'm like in agony with my boobs like they're just so sore um and like my nipples are like really really sensitive um I just kind of feel like achy everywhere I can't even explain it um and my belly is like so sensitive to touch um it, it just feels like as soon as I touch it it's like pain that's the only way which i can explain it so yeah today i kind of did like a little prepping day for tomorrow um i said prepping day i didn't really do much um i had to have my nails taken well i, I had biab on my nails so i've had to have the biab taken i say taken off my nails this is currently what we're working with went to mary hill with um my sister and mia and i just got some little bits and bobs for tomorrow i didn't really know what to take for the hospital they kind of said like a dressing gown and slippers and stuff um so i got some bits from primark so i just got myself a new carmex because i'm obsessed with carmex <laughs> some pants um a couple of pets a fluffy socks this really cute little blanket that i thought would just be nice to take in case it's cold because i don't know and then just like this comfy set of pajamas that i thought i could just wear this there and home because i feel like i could get away with it as a like cold two-piece but then it's also comfy um but i didn't think that it looked massively like pajamas so we've got that hi cobra boy hi hi i love you i love you um so yeah tomorrow is egg retrieval day